Hey fam, Shandon speaking. The way we dress makes so much difference to how others perceive us and it's one of the first things that people will notice when you approach them. So it's impossible to underestimate the importance of clothing. So let's reveal the best style advice that will skyrocket your attractiveness. To begin with, I would say the primary attractiveness rule when it comes down to clothes is quite obvious. Your look needs to be clean and tidy. No white t-shirts that gone yellow. No piling on sweaters or hoodies. If there are sweat marks or fabric has stretched out, throw the garment away or donate it. Be more eco-friendly. Because even if it's a white Prada shirt, but it's gone yellow due to number of washes and time, it doesn't look fancy anymore. That's why I would not buy branded casual wear like t-shirts and jeans. It's just a waste of money. Because if you wear them daily, very soon they will wear off and it will be so hard to get rid of them because it costs a fortune. So some basic stuff such as t-shirts, shirts, jeans, black skirts. Don't spend a lot of money on stuff like that because you need to wash them frequently. Then to boost your attractiveness, you need to identify which parts of your body you actually like and show them more and hide those that you don't like. For example, I don't like my hip dips and the top part of my legs. They look a lot bigger than the rest of my legs, but I like my legs overall. So I would wear a skirt that would cover this part of my legs, but let the rest of my legs show. This would also widen my hips and visually decrease my waist. So an above knee skirt definitely looks very flattering on me. Just compare how much slimmer I appear if this part of my legs show and if they don't. Also, compare the photos when my hip dips show and when I cover them up. See how much attention my uneven hips attract compared to when the dips are covered and how my body shape appears more balanced and harmonious. So, this is exactly what you need to do for yourself. You need to identify what parts of your body you like and which ones you don't and hide and mask the latter. I will release a separate video on how you can dress based on your body shape. So subscribe if you don't want to miss it out. Thirdly, baggy clothes can make you look slimmer. But you need to wear them separately. What do I mean by this? You either wear it at the top or at the bottom, not together. If you wear baggy tops together with baggy bottoms, this just visually adds you extra weight that you don't need. Unless you are very skinny or you go to a grocery store and don't want extra attention. See how I look with an oversized hoodie and baggy jeans. I didn't exaggerate the weight that pants would give me. I recreated how they would fit my legs in real life. Now compare this to when I live an oversized sweater but replace the pants for skinny jeans. I look a lot skinnier, even skinnier than the original because the hoodie covered my problematic parts. And this is not the power of Photoshop because I followed my natural body lines. One more piece of advice for oversized tops. I recommend wearing a sports bra underneath them. Not just because it's more comfy, but also because it will slim you down, especially if you're quite chesty like me. I mean, I'm not chesty breast-wise, I just have a wide rib cage. But my advice applies to both. So from the front, it doesn't make too much difference. Nobody's gonna see your boobies underneath an oversized sweater. But having a normal bra underneath would make your physique appear bigger, bulkier and visually add you extra weight if you look from the side. So if you like being comfortable and wearing oversized tops, make use of comfy bras too. Finally, make use of horizontal lines on body parts that you want to slim down. Yes, I didn't mistake in it. Horizontal lines. Although it goes against the conventional fashion advice, they will have a slimming effect and I will prove it to you now. Look at these two lines. Which one do you think is shorter? Well, I guess you've picked the horizontal line. And in reality, they are both 10 units long. It's called vertical horizontal illusion. Observers tend to overestimate the length of a vertical line relative to a horizontal line of the same length. So if you wear a belt around your waist or wear a top with lines, it will seem smaller. Now look at these two squares and tell me which one seems thinner and taller. Yes, you correctly deducted that they are in fact of the same length and height. But once again, the square with horizontal lines looks thinner and taller. 
so make use of those. I would add one exclusion from this row. Vertical lines can make you look slimmer, but they need to be located on the sides of your body. For example, you can buy pants that have stripes on the sides, or you can buy some dresses or tops that contain stripes on the sides too. Or you can also have some lines on your waist. This will have a slimming effect. Just compare the photo without any lines and with them. The difference is drastic. Okay, I'm sure you've heard the statement that white makes you look fat and black makes you look slim. From what I've researched, it can be explained by the way how white reflects more light and that on white clothes, you can see a lot better all of the shadows from the fat folds. Yes, you would generally wear brighter colored clothes on body parts that seem skinny enough and darker colors on what you want to slim down. However, I would still say that style matters a lot more than color. For example, look at me wearing black shorts and at me wearing white pants. Once again, I fold my legs with white pants and even went overboard to recreate how mom jeans would fit me. They are not slim fit, and yet my legs appear way slimmer in white pants. So yes, colors matter, but style matters a lot more. The rule that I personally like to follow concerns colors. I don't have more than three colors in an outfit, including shoes. And although black and white are not technically colors, I count them too. So, for example, I wear a pink top and blue jeans. I can wear shoes of any other color or any of the used ones. For a bag or a backpack, since I don't have many to choose from and since most of them are patterned, I just try for them not to be very different from the main color palette. However, if I have a small painting on my clothes or shoes, I don't count those colors. Like on this photo, I have hearts on my sleeves, but they are quite tiny, so their color is disregarded. When colors are just slightly different from each other in terms of temperature or humidity, but you can still qualify them as different shadows of one color, I don't like to wear them together. For example, two different shades of white next to each other, that's just a terrible idea. Don't wear them together. Or you have blue jeans and a blue denim jacket that has a slightly different shade of blue. And it's better to go for any other different color for the denim jacket. I would personally go for powder pink denim jacket instead. What if you have a patterned piece of clothing which has multiple colors? Personally, I'm not a fan of those. I like to keep my clothes basic and unicolored unless it's one-piece garments like dresses and jumpsuits. But if you like them, the rest of your outfit should only contain colors from the pattern. But you can also make use of white and black. Also, it's important to mention prints drag attention to the body part they are worn on and make it look bigger. So only put them on body parts that you like and want to stand out. I am confident that anyone can become above average looking without expensive plastic surgeries or trendy cosmetic procedures if they just take care of a couple of things. Great style is one of them. If you want to know the rest, click on this video here. Be rational, be healthy, value yourself and know that I love you.